Hello, welcome back to Crack the Cryptic and a 6x6 six six puzzle today and a debut by Flash Grelden with, um, with their puzzle Rodeo or Rodeo. There are two ways at least of saying that word. So I'll look at this in a moment. Don't forget that um, the rather marvellous Blobs has given us the rather marvellous um, Lord of the Rings Sudoku Hunt on Patreon. It is well worth a try. Loads of other content on Patreon at the moment. Me playing Connections from the New York Times. Um, crosswords, of course. There's uh, Simon's Solve of Sky Skyscraper by Fistamafell. Glum Hippo's how-to solution videos for the previous month's Patreon reward. They, the Snake Egg Collection. Loads going on there, as always. Loads going on in our apps. There's, um, we have a Thermo Sudoku app and an Arrow Sudoku app, don't we? Yeah, we do. I mean, loads of brilliant apps. Do check them out. They are some of the best on the market. Definitely. They are the best. There you go. Um, and, oh, I did not shut down my... Sorry to the guy who... Who is it? Um... Lost Cabrio hates me getting email notifications when I forget to close my email before playing it. Anyway, I was going to mention Sven Sudoku Pad and our merch, but you can check the links under the video where the first link is to this puzzle, um, Rodeo, I'm going to call it, by Flash Groudon. Now, um, the rules are as follows. Normal 6 by 6 Sudoku rules, which mean we place 1 to 6 in every row, every column, and every 3 by 3 box. A 3 by 2 box. Count them, Mark. 3 by 2 box. So we're just using the digits 1 to 6, unlike, I think, the last time I tried a 6 by 6 puzzle. Anyway, um, digits and knights move apart cannot contain the same... Cells and knights move apart cannot contain the same digit. Um, so I've got my friend Nighty McKnightface, in case I need reminding of that rule, um, which will no doubt be very important in a 6 by 6 um, You know a knight's move in chess from there we could move to any one of those cells. Um, and thermo, digits must increase along a thermometer starting from the bulb end. The two digits on an arrow sum to the digit in the circle. Pardon me. <coughs> and, oh, we have a circle and a square as well, a gray circle and a square. So a, a gray circle in a cell indicates an odd digit and a gray square indicates an even one. Maybe, the, I'm not going to assume that is the case for these thermos and I might even change the colors for the version you get to solve so that the, the circle is um, orange for an odd number just so it's differentiated from thermo bulbs, which obviously are circles, but don't count as circles for that rule normally. Okay, so those are the rules. Um, Flash, if I can call you Flash, suggested that this was a relatively approachable puzzle. So we shall, we shall see what we shall see. Let's get cracking. So, I mean, I could pencil mark the thermos. No, let's look at that cell. Okay, this, this is odd, and it cannot be a five, because if it was, it would add to at least two and make a non six by six Sudoku digit. So that's one or three, and this one is two or four. It can't be six, and they're adding to three or five. So that has to be the case. This circle is effectively, funnily enough, it's a gray circle. in the sense that it must be an odd digit. That's not by the rules, though. That's because it's adding an odd and an even. Um, now, what is that telling us about the thermo? If that was a one, the one in this box would be there. Oh, the knight's move. I seem to remember that six by sixes are very constrained if they have a knight's move constraint. Now, this is buried in my brain somewhere. I'm wondering if somebody once told me there were basically two, two possible solutions to a 6x6 six six with a knight's move. And then their rotations and reflections multiplied that number, but not to an enormous 
sum. So let me just spend a moment thinking about knight's moves. Let's just ponder where this cell can go. We'll make that a random blue cell. Now that cell sees all of these, this one by knight's move. So in box two, it has to go in one of those cells. Now they, they see both of those cells. Actually, they see that one as well. So now the blue cell definitely can't go in any of those in box four. Oh, that's okay. I get this now. I've, I don't know if I've seen this before or if it's new to me, but look at those positions because that's really interesting. They see all of these positions entirely. That one sees those two by knights move and that one vertically. That one sees that one vertically and those two by knights move. That one sees those two by knights move and that one vertically. So again, blue would have to be in one of those cells. And I don't know at the top, but that's really interesting. Once you get blue into one of those, then it's, I think we're going to find, yeah, where do, um, I think we're going to find that we can check aboard the whole grid into three and three. Let me just work on this a bit. Yes, where does this cell, whatever it is, go in this box? Look, it sees those two in the vertical and those two by knight's move. So that also goes into one of those two. So basically, I think this must apply everywhere. All of those three cells see all of those three. Yeah, they do, they do. We can basically therefore color this whole grid into two colors on alternating, like a bishop would move in chess. That's one color. And those three digits will appear in those three cells in that box and those three cells in that box, etc., etc. And this must work all the time. Now, was it just bec I'm moving across? Is this right? That one. Yeah, no, it, I think this does work all the time. Those three all see those two cells at least. Mm. Now, I'm not 100% sure. Was it just because I... No, I didn't... I wasn't using the thermo. No, down one side, those three have to be the same as those three and those three. That's definitely true, and that must apply on the other side of the grid as well. Now, okay, maybe I've been a little premature. Maybe if I colour those dark blue, maybe I can't be sure that light blue are the same as dark blue. Let me just think about that. And I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not getting on with solving the puzzle, but I think this is probably useful preliminary work and, and also will educate us about six by six grids and knight's moves. So where can that be in this? Yeah, no, that's fine. That must be in one of those two cells in this region. And then it can't be there or there. And once it's in one of those two, then it's there applying to this whole pattern over this side. And the white cells there have to be the white cells, sorry, in box four and in box six. So yeah, this must apply throughout. That one clearly sees all of those. Could that possibly be there? Which would be white on this side. So it would then sit in one of those two cells and one of these two. And if it was here or here, it couldn't go into any of the blue cells in boxes. in boxes three or five where it has to, so they couldn't possibly be alive. And it can't be in both of those because they're in the same column. Yeah, okay, this does apply throughout. We can use this checkerboard pattern throughout and say that blue cells are one set of three digits repeating again and again in all the boxes. And the orange cells, which orange cells are you say, those ones are the other set. And now we know that one and three are in one group Oh no, we don't. We, whatever this digit is, well, it goes there 
and it can't be a 1 now. And in fact, that determines this whole arrow in a moment. 3, 2, 1, that becomes a 3, this must be 2, and that's a 5. And look, they're just done now. And this is why, I mean, we had to do that thinking, I think, to get to this position. But now the puzzle is going to get quite straightforward, which is what uh, Flash was warning us about. Now that's got to be a 5, because 5 reaches that by Sudoku. And then we're just left in those top two boxes with 4s and 6s to resolve now. We also know that all the orange, this is perfect colouring, all the orange digits are odd and all the blue digits are even. I didn't know that was going to come out, but it did. Anyway, um, so, so we've got to go down to this thermo to disambiguate. Actually, yeah, that's going to be fine. That's how we're going to get here. So this one is four or six because it's got to be blue and it's not two. So we get to fill in that thermo entirely and now we're probably just filling, filling in the puzzle and marvelling at, at a very clever, this is the only place for six in column four, at a very clever construction. Oh yes, I should just work on evens and odds. And it's, it's very straightforward, isn't it? A very clever construction that, that is really quite surprising in what it delivers. I think in some ways the surprising thing is that this grid can exist and and be disambiguated by such light, light touch um, items. Anyway, that was a five, so this is a one in the column. That fixes three and one. Their boxes are finished. And I mean, it's very easy to finish off once you've begun. It's that's really not what the puzzle is about, doing the Sudoku once you've got started. It's about understanding the relationships. And there we go. Eight and a half minutes. Now, I think that's still a very interesting puzzle. And very, you know, it's fun to do that, that consideration of the odds and the evens. If you don't think that's fun, I don't know. I mean, I can see that you might think, well, it works, but... I would need that explained to me. I'd be interested to know if you didn't have that perception. Can you solve this puzzle and is it relatively straightforward or is it much more complicated and you need to do case testing on digits of where they could repeat in the grid? It's, it's a really interesting idea. And I mean, I th personally, I think it's incredibly clever and I'm delighted that, that Flash Groudon has brought it to our attention. Um, and I think it's a, a very worthy puzzle. So... Not my first rodeo, perhaps, because I did know about... Um, I did know that there was a big constraint. I didn't actually know that, that you could checkerboard the whole grid once you have this knight's move constraint. But that applies to any 6x6 six six knight's move puzzle. And when I do one in a year and a half from now, I will have forgotten that. So I'll have to learn it all over again, I imagine. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That was an absolute pleasure to do. Not a long video tonight, but sometimes you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's a shorter one. And we will be back with more tomorrow. Bye for now.